but I Today we give God thanks for all fathers and father figures. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We love you, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We love you. I praise God for my dad and for all of the father figures in my life.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you provide over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. As we work together with God, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For God says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown. And yet we are all well known as dying. And see, we are alive as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as have nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, Open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have you ever been on a boat in the middle of a sea storm? It's not a very pleasant experience. In fact, I can say from first-hand experience that it's really not a pleasant experience. When I was at the end of my senior year of college, Carthage had this tradition where the graduates would get to go on a boat tour on Lake Geneva. 
And the day that we were scheduled to go on this boat tour, there were lots of questions back and forth about whether or not it was actually going to happen because many days that week there had been just torrential rain. And who knew if we were actually going to be able to go out on the boat or not? Well, when that day came, the weather was not that great, but it was good enough for us to get on the boat. So we rushed onto the boat, and as soon as we set sail, wouldn't you know, the rain decided to set in. And on this small little boat on Lake Geneva, we were just bouncing back and forth on the waves. And the folks that worked on the ship itself were saying, don't go above deck, stay, stay inside the main cabin area. We're going to bring up food and everything, and it'll be just fine. But we were still bouncing back and forth on the waves. And when mealtime finally did come, trying to maintain some sense of equilibrium without having sea legs while going through this buffet line to get your food really wasn't all that great. And then as you were trying to eat with your stomach moving up and down and back and forth, just like the waves outside were moving up and down and back and forth, one easily gets quite sick quite fast. It's understandable why the disciples were so afraid in today's gospel. Certainly they didn't have a meal that they were trying to eat on the boat, but having just come from the crowd, having just participated with all that had been going on prior, it's very easy to imagine that they themselves, even if they were skilled fishermen, were starting to wonder and worry what was going on. After all, we're not talking about modern vessels like the one that I was in on Lake Geneva. We were talking about tiny little wooden boats. And as the waves came up and as the wind howled, the fears started to settle in. What's going to happen? Are we going to be able to make it to the other side of the seashore? Am I ever going to be able to have a meal again without feeling it's going to decide to rear up on me? The disciples were scared. And in the midst of all the anxiety and fear and worry as to what was going to happen with them, they start to notice that Jesus is sleeping. Somehow in the midst of all of the chaos that seems to be going on around them, their Lord He's in a state of peace and calm, almost totally absent from all that is going on around them. And they panic, and they shout out, and they say, What? <laughs> Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus, awoken from all of this, decides that it is time to bring a different kind of calm to the situation. As if being in a state of peace amongst them wasn't enough, Jesus had to take it one step further and actually physically calm the storm that was raging around them. They're left in awe, saying, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Siblings in Christ, brothers and sisters, I wonder sometimes, I really do wonder sometimes if we have become so unable to find calm and peace in situations that we demand from God such public and visible signs. And yet that isn't what Jesus is trying to encourage in this passage, is it? Jesus' words to them after he stills the storm is asking them why they were afraid in the first place. They knew that Jesus was with them out on the water, and yet they were still afraid. We know that the Lord God is guiding us through this time too. The Lord promises to be with us in every step of every day of every life in these journeys that we share together. And yet, we still fear that things aren't going to go a certain way. Maybe that's what it's really about, isn't it? That our fears and anxieties come from a place of seeing that things may not go the way that we want them to, rather than how God is allowing them to be. 
maybe, maybe we're just trapped a little bit in ourselves rather than recognizing Christ's presence in the moment. And perhaps it's hard for us to recognize that because Christ's presence in the moment is that calm and peace. Jesus is resting in this story, remember? Jesus isn't being boisterous or loud. Jesus isn't jumping up and down, drawing attention to the storm that's going around. No, the disciples are doing that. We're the ones doing that. Jesus is the calm companion that reminds us to take heart, to take a moment to center ourselves and our minds and recognize that even in the most chaotic, strange, bizarre, unusual, and unexpected of times, Christ is still bringing peace. Sure, it may not be the peace that we understand or would like to have in the moment, but that peace is there. And we, as members of the body of Christ together, have an opportunity, a profound opportunity to share that peace. Not in anything overly catchy, not in anything that, you know, <laughs> would be like those folks that spin signs on a street corner, but in simple, peaceful, caring ways of presence. Our presence in this world is a reminder of God's presence in this world. Our proclamation of God's love and grace in this world calls us to point to God's very peace brought into this world. Yes, we have trials, we have tribulations, we have moments that make us feel like we're tossed about in storms. And yet Christ is still with us. And the peace that God brings is still with us and always will be. Amen. Let us come before our triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east to west, north to south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for countries experiencing 
violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Give us courage to work for justice and peace throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those experiencing oppression. Liberate those in bondage from systems and chains that bind them. From the systems and chains that bind us, remove barriers that separate one from another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations, O oh God. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them, O oh God, our Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what, you, what we receive here, your body and life in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God 
who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamination. I catch the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord, Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord, What though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. No storms can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, the fountain never springing. All things are mine since I am his, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my apples calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven, Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.